Welcome to Ask Maureen, where we cover historical image analysis, genealogy, and how to work with your family photo collection. I'm Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, and I'll try to answer your questions. Good afternoon. Welcome to the January 24th, 2019 edition of The Photo Detective. You can watch this on Facebook live as a video, or you can watch the replay later, or you can listen to the podcast on iTunes. Now, I love this Be Live platform because listeners can ask questions as they watch by commenting on the Facebook Live post. So if you have any questions while we go through this broadcast, please let me know. So I have a new project and it's a passion project. Like all my photo stuff isn't already a passion project, but this is in particular something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Years ago, and I often feel when I say years ago, like I'm I'm doing the Star Wars in a galaxy far, far away. Sometimes it feels far, far away. Sometimes it feels like I did this just a minute ago. I was a curator, a non-print curator for uh, the State Historical Society here in Rhode Island. And under my purview were things like photographs, duh, and engravings and paper ephemera, which are sort of considered disposable things, but a lot of people keep them anyway because they're so lovely. Maps and films. And I love old maps. And I actually have a small collection of, of old maps from, from Providence, which is where I live. It's my home city. So this passion project I'm talking about is my new website called oldpvd.com. And if you're wondering why PVD, it's because that's the airport code. And it appears everywhere here in Providence. Everyone knows it's PVD is the abbreviation for Providence, just as you probably know what your local airport abbreviation is. But old PVD has a certain ring to it. What old PVD does is connect, combine old maps with photographs in in a way to tell the story of my home city of Providence, Rhode Island. But it does a whole lot more than that. So it, I think of it as a resource for preservationists. I think of it as a resource for historians. I think of it as a resource for picture researchers. So because I used to be a curator, I know where all the photos are buried. I know that which archives have which images. I know places to look for pictures. I know uh, who collects Rhode Island pictures. I mean, I do now that I'm not a, and for the last few years now that I'm no longer a curator, I um, collect images of my home city. So, because I always knew I wanted to create something like this. Those maps, that we look at when we do our genealogical research are full of a lot of information that's pretty much hidden from us, oftentimes in documents and in even sometimes historical photographs. So when you put them together, you get this amazing way of looking at the city. And I don't know about you, but when I see a historical historical photograph of an old house, I'm always like, oh, I wonder what the inside of that house looked like. So old PVD attempts to answer that by pinning these markers to maps. And I'll show you how all this works. Pinning them to a map so that if lots of people have photographs of the same building, perhaps one archive has them of the outside, one has it of the backyard, one has images of the inside. It's a bringing together of all the pictures in one place. So because I used to be a curator and and know a lot about the photo history of the state and a lot about where the images are, people often come to me and ask me, do I know where a particular image is? And I thought that this would be a great resource for that. I also think that this is a resource that can be used by students. So what did I do when I had this idea? 
I have an amazing technical person who powers a lot of the stuff that you see that I do behind the scenes on my website. Um, I have a great team of people that I work with um, to make all the photo detective stuff happen and all the ideas that I have a reality. Uh, and it's a pretty, it's a, we're pretty busy over here at photo detective, but in this case, I turn to my web guy, as I call him, Mike Broner, and some of you may know him. He has a company called Genia Labs. And Mike is a really smart guy. And I went to him and I said, listen, I have this idea. I want to create sort of a one-stop shop for historical images and put them on historical on a historical map. And he, without missing a beat, said, how about a series of historical maps? And I said, is that even possible? And he said, it will be. And so old PVD is possible. And now, uh, as I'll talk about later, it's also possible for you to use what we created uh, to apply this to wherever you, whatever project you have. And it is adaptable to other types of projects. First, I just want to say welcome to everyone. We have Deb, Jeter, Andrew, as, as usual. Deb, nice to see you in the room. Same with Deborah Stock, somebody from Beer, Big Bear Lake in California. And Kate Keller says she loves my office. Thanks, Kate, because I really do love my office. It's all, I had it all made um, from this, you know, room in a Victorian house. And I love it. So would you like to see old PVD? Because I think once you look at it, you'll be saying what everyone I show this to says. The first thing, the first word out of everyone's mouth when I demo this site to prospective participants is, wow, and how did you make this happen? So let's take a look. I think I'm hoping I can make myself much smaller. There we go, because you don't really need to see me. You need to see old PVD. So here we go. Here is Old Providence, and there it is on the map. So what you're seeing is a turn of the century map of Providence, and this is in my collection. And then you're seeing little dots with numbers in them, and you're probably wondering what that means. So every dot with a number in it means that there are two images. So if I, oops. It really wasn't supposed to happen quite like that. Let's go back and see what we can get that to do. Oh, it takes a little bit for all these markers to, to you can zoom in and you can zoom, let's zoom in again. So when you scroll over the number, you see that little blue triangle, that tells you that there are three images within that triangle. When we scroll over number 42, which is downtown Providence, then that shows that there's 42 images for downtown Providence. So we have uploaded uh, somewhere around 600 images so far, and I'm gonna disconnect my phone. And that's a lot of pictures, but it's no exaggeration to say that there is half a million images waiting to be loaded on this site, which is a lot of pictures. So let's look at one of these. So if you, oh, so that's the other thing. Here we go. There's so much, there's so much we did here. Let's go make this a little bigger. So if you use the slider on the top, so right now we have three maps on the site. We have the turn of the century map. And then if you go back a little bit further, you can see that the map, I want to call it depopulates. So that while at the top, for 2019, we have all these different pictures. When you go backwards, you notice that some of the images disappear. So all of the markers are pinned to the map based on the built date for the building. And so sometimes trying to establish that date can take a little bit of time. And so I have things in the hopper waiting to be uh, loaded once I do a little more research. So here's the second map the 1870s map of Providence. And then we go back even further and the map isn't loading. We have an 1835 map of Providence with hardly any little markers on it. 
So that's how the slider works at the top. And then suppose you want to click on a marker. So let's click on a marker. We'll just click on, we'll click on anything. We'll click over here. So this is my attempt to document the history of Providence in maps and pictures. There's a lot of the city that is undocumented or I think is undocumented, but maybe not because I know that there are collections in archives. I know that there are collections within private organizations and I've been in touch with some of them. I know that private collectors collect Providence images, but I also know from all my work as a photo detective, that we all have images in our family collections of places that may not may no longer be there. So I was looking through a family Polaroid album and there in the album was a Polaroid of this coal, I don't know what you call those things, the coal storage that used to be right off one of the highways in Providence. And for some reason, I took a picture of it and it has been long gone, but I even have my own family sort of picture to add to this. Some people tell me they have pictures of the houses where their ancestors were born or lived uh, here in the capital city. And those can be added to the map. Pretty much anyone can add to the map. Let's see if we have any questions. Cindy Batch Bachelor would like to see this done with more major cities. Well, one of my inspirations for this was Old New York, Old NYC, which is a wonderful uh, collection of images pinned to Google Maps, but I wanted it pinned to a series of historical maps. Um, and there's a reason for that. So let me hide that comment. Oops, if I can hide that comment. And let's go back to Old Providence. So there's that. So then we can click on one of these blue markers. And of course it doesn't want to load. We'll click on another one. Oops, let's look at this one, Oakey Street. So right now, one of the major collections that I'm adding to this site is a massive collection. It is the Providence Preservation Society Historical Marker Program. There are 1,500 properties I hear in the marker program. Uh, it is taking quite a long time to add all of these, but it will be a resource. And so when you look at it, you can see here's the history of the house. You can even see that there is, so this is a PDF history of the house. You can also see that the images are all double watermarked. I don't want people right click copying images that are in someone else's collection. So every image will have old online, will have oldpvd.com uh, scrolling across it. But also in the lower right hand corner, it will have the uh, watermark or logo for the organization that has contributed these images. So there we have that. Now, if we exit out of this, Anyone right now can view old PVD, but if you want to add an image or if you want to participate on a team with me to help me finish these 1500 uh, <laughs> markers that need to be pinned to the map, I could really use some help on that. It's all virtual, it's all on an online website. So anyone living anywhere uh, can help me add these. But say you wanted to uh, comment on a building. So perhaps your ancestor worked in this building at 38 Bath Street. You would be able to do so. So you could tell me a story about the building or the people who live there. And that's the other part of this project, which is collecting all the information that people have about the people and places that are on these maps. One of the other things you can do is, one of my favorite examples is the Crown Hotel. I can't even tell you how many pictures I have of the Crown Hotel. But when you click this and it goes to the Crown Hotel, which used to be in downtown Providence, you should be able to find the marker for it. And everything is searchable. So the name of the building, if we have noted that, the uh, description, 
the caption, all of that sort of thing. The streets are all uh, indexed. So if you click on that, come on, click. We come to the Crown Hotel, which I couldn't even believe it that this was demolished in 1992. Uh, but each marker has the name of the building, if we know it, when it was built, the address, which is pinned to a Google map, which is the under face for all of this, and then a description of the building if we can find one. If not, we're gonna rely on other individuals to add that information. And then everything is vetted. Nothing gets posted directly to the site. I look at everything that's, that's being suggested to be added just to make sure that the information is correct or maybe there's another marker for that building. We wanna add it to that marker. But for instance, if we look at the Crown Hotel, there's the Crown Hotel. There's another view of it. These are all postcards in my collection. And we have a view of the inside. We have the Crown Hotel coffee shop. We have one of the bedroom suites. We have the reception room. Just the different version of the coffee shop, a later rendition of it, the foyer and back to the exterior. So that's how it works. And then you can click this and add an image if we have another image of the Crown Hotel. And I might uh, from some other organizations. Uh, let's see if anybody has any comments. Anybody have any questions? Where did you source the maps? Deborah Stock wants to know where you source the maps. So one of the maps comes from the Library of Congress, the 1835. The other two maps are in my collection. I have a, uh, they all copyright free. I have a private collector who has this amazing collection of things. And I went to see him to tell him about uh, this project and to hopefully uh, get him to participate. And he's interested, I just have to go to his house again. But while I was there, he had a stack of maps in the corner of his office and he just picked them up and he handed them to me and he said, well, you can take these home and scan them if you want. He goes, I, I know who you are, I trust you. And I was like, nope, no, 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 I'll come back with my scanner and we'll do it that way. And so that's the question there on maps. And let's go up, oops. And Paula's saying that those are her initials for old PVD. I guess you will never uh, forget this. And no, we're not gonna call that your nickname, Paula, not ever. So this, as I mentioned, is possible to do for any community or any project uh, anywhere. And I mean, it could be something as simple as you want to catalog uh, uh, all the grave sites in your community. It could be, uh, like I've done with photographs from various repositories. I mean, right now I have the City Archives has signed on uh, there. They said I could come down and add images, uh, the Library of Congress images, the, uh, oh, geez, I don't know, a, a private organization uh, is currently scanning their materials to add them. One of the private collectors, I know I was chatting with him at a, postcard show and he said to me, uh, I have this 1948 uh, research project with images that was done by this local uh, architectural historian in 1948. And he went around in 1948 and photographed all the existing barns. A lot of them are long gone, but he scanned that entire thing for me and I'm just waiting to put it up. I just, just too many pictures and not enough time. Literally a half a million photographs could go up on this site uh, in no time. Uh, Deborah says, doesn't history bin, pin work in a similar way for other places? It does, but old PVD uses a series of historical maps. History pin primarily pins to Google Maps. But I wanted to pin not to a modern map, but to a historical map. So let's go, let's go back to Old Providence for a second. So if I want to 
add an image, I would click on this little plus sign and I can add an image. And so I put a name of the building, Team Maureen, if you want to be on my team, send me an email. Uh, address, the built-in date, you can tag them if you want, uh, and the history. Now here's the thing, suppose that street no longer exists, as often happens, right? Streets disappear. We have one right walking distance from my house that's about to be gobbled up. Uh, they need the space. And it was a compromise here in town about, well, where are we going to put it? Rip down six buildings or take over this little side street? So the side street's going. But there were houses on that street at some point, And maybe I have a picture of them. And I want to pin them to the map. But I wouldn't want to pin it to a Google map, although you can see Google map underneath this historical map. You'd want to pin it to a map where the street still exists. So when you go back, in time. Oh, there's the 1875 map. So you can actually pin your image. You can put the address in here and then drag the map to where it needs to go. So there's the old train station. I have pictures of that. That's no longer there. But I can pin that on that historical map. So it'll always look like where it was. Plus, if it's pinned on the modern map or the turn of the century map, you'll know where it once was. So there's a lot of history in all of this. See if we have any more questions. Yes, Deborah, I think historical maps are very useful. I use them all the time in my research and I'm sure you do. So what powers this? It's chrono charts, which is something that Mike Brona and I have worked on. I would like to say that this particular project that I created, Old PVD, is, and I'll show you the back end too, just because I can. So I manage the markers and I can manage the comments, I can manage the teams. It has an admin dashboard, which is very handy if you want to be the coordinator of such a project. So, for instance, here's the uh, image that's been uploaded of engine number five, hook and ladder number seven, and it shows exactly where it is. I haven't added the history to this yet because I need to go down to the city archive and do a little research into all the fire stations uh, at one time that I now have images of. But I also would like to add a note here that says, this has been a Mexican restaurant since such and such a date. So if I use city directories, I can figure out exactly when the fire station was turned into a Mexican restaurant, uh, which is also sort of walking distance from my house. And you can save it. You move the map around if it's in the wrong place. There's lots of uh, fun things you can do with it. So let's go back. Oops, let me just go back that way. It takes a minute to load. But I'm going to share chrono charts. So this is what we've put together uh, for Old Providence. But it is useful for other places and it is adaptable for other places. So Mike and I are, are talking to a number of, of uh, historical agencies all over the world, actually, that have uh, contacted us just in the last week since we launched this. So Chrono Charts is the, the power behind old PVD. And basically what we thought is if you want to publish your archive online, if you have a substantial archive of items, and you want to put them on a historical map in a series of historical maps, then this builds on what History Pin did, and it builds on some other sites that are similar, uh, but not the same. We did a lot of research on this to figure out what would work, and this explains it quite succinctly. It's geo-reference maps, so you ensure accurate alignment of historical features with modern maps. We have plans to add about 20 maps to this site. Uh, right now, I'm focused completely on adding all the images that I have backlogged here and getting to some other places to not only uh, scan more maps, uh, but uh, scan more pictures. The public library is participating. Uh, I have a long list of uh, participants at this point. And each one, as you can see, has a watermark in the lower right-hand corner. So this image here, which under community participation, maybe you want to tell a story about how you, uh, your great grandfather proposed to your great grandmother by uh, going out on the ponds and our 
Public Park, Roger Williams Park at the Dalrymple Boathouse. Perhaps it's something like that. Time referenced content and additional features. This is everything it can do. Uh, you can sign up for a free project consultation or keep following me on MaureenTaylor.com to hear more about what we're doing. Um, as I mentioned, this is a completely self-funded project at this point. So it's, uh, oh, and there's Joan. Hey, Joan, how are you? If an archive contributes, can the record include a link to their catalog record for that photo? We are working on some things like that right now. Let me show you uh, what that looks like. Um, where's one that we've uploaded? Maybe this one. Nope, that's the Point Street Grammar School. Let's look at, we were looking again for something that was added. Yeah, so this was added from the Providence Preservation Society. Uh, and they like this so much um, because it puts their collection online. So right now it says held by the following Archive Providence Preservation Society. But within these organizations, there are specific collections as well, like especially at the public library, which has a whole lot of different collections. So maybe we want to specify that it's not just from the Providence Preservation Society, but that it's from the, and this is added by one of my team members, but that it would be the Providence Public Library or the Providence Preservation Society Gowdy Collection. Uh, rather than their slide collection. So we're, we're going to get a little more specific with that. I hope that answers your question, Joan. Let me know if you have any other. If an archive contributes, can the record include a link to their catalog record for that photo? Probably. We can make that work, I'm sure. We'll talk to Mike about that. Chronocharts.com. I would love to get this information from my historic town. Cindy, we'd love to talk with you. Just go to chronocharts.com and uh, send us a little message and we will definitely get back to you. We'll talk to you about how we made that happen. Deborah Holman, I imagine there's many historical societies that would love this. Yes, I believe so. I mean, what's not to love, but I'm partial. Uh, it was just a tinkling in the back of my head for a, a number of, for a long time until I talked to Mike. And it's taken us about a year and a half to put it all together. And we're still, you know, tweaking it. We find things that people want, like uh, Joan, some people do want that direct link and we're working on that. It's all manageable because it's all behind the, you know, it's in the, it's what's happening behind the scenes. Mark Davis, thank you so much for saying that you'd love to see this in your hometown. I, since my blog post came out, uh, two days ago, that is pretty much all I've been doing for the last couple of days is just answering email from people who want to know how to make this happen. Now, Rhode Island is a really small state, which makes it easy to do things. But I decided to start with just the capital city because obviously I'm one of the, the things is I'm not a nonprofit. So I do not uh, qualify for granting uh, grant money. So I'm thinking of ways to monetize the site. Right now it's completely open, free for everyone. But if I really do upload a half a million pictures and growing, then it's gonna become quite expensive to maintain. So we're working on all of that. And yes, Joan, that's what I was just talking about. It would work for a whole state. It could easily work for the whole state. As long as you have the maps for the state with some detail, it all depends on how much detail you, you want. And Deb's like, so can other states do this through chrono charts? Absolutely. We are marketing this as a product uh, produced by um, Mike Broner and myself. Uh, and we'd love to see this because it's so much fun to work on. And it's so much fun to see the faces of people that are doing research and go to the site and then see something they didn't know so for instance, a colleague mentioned on Facebook today that she found the street where her ancestors had lived and she hadn't, she hadn't known that before, hadn't seen that before. And Susan Schuler wants this for her grandpa's hometown. It no longer exists. It doesn't have to exist. I believe that there's a way that we can just pin it to a series of historical maps. 
maybe there's one or two maps and, and surely that i mean the maps is the most difficult part of this whole thing because some of these maps are huge and so i'm scanning them in an enormous number of pixels and sections and then mike uh, does his magic behind the scenes uh it actually crashed its computer when we first got started because the maps are so big but we you know we figured out that it's all about figuring out the being creative and figuring out the answers. And Mike's pretty creative with that technical stuff. Uh, somebody asked me what kind of scanner I have. I have an Epson. I love the Epson scanners. Anyone else have any questions for me? I'm I'm happy to see this project come to be uh, since it was just an idea for a very long time, and I can imagine all kinds of ways to interact with the community about this. Uh, I want to go into the schools and talk to them about how they can use it for research. I think it's really important for kids to know the history of their community and get a sense of the place where they live, not just what it looks like now, but what it once looked like. Uh, the city of Providence, and I'm sure this is the same, with uh, lots of communities, but right now, the the when everybody goes out to parties and things, everybody's like, "Can you believe it? How many cranes did you count downtown?" I mean, there's hotels being built, there's houses being torn down, there's buildings, you know, old buildings being torn down, and there's no real documentation for this. So I have a whole nother part of this that I'm trying to do, which is in. Uh, which is encourage some photographers, and I don't want to announce who one of my photographers might be, to help me uh, document the city and document these buildings before they're ripped down and then pin them here on the map so that they're there for all times. Uh, Joan asks if a latitude or longitude in a spreadsheet, will the program automatically pin the scan? We're gonna to have to ask Mike that question, Joan, and I think we're talking next week sometime. Can it work for a super small town for their museum? Yes, Debbie Putman, it can. We had a really small community, not too far from here that was interested on um, they're trying to figure out what they're gonna do, but they would want to do a project where they have this collection of photographs that were all taken at sort of the turn of the century and they wanna pin it on a map so that everyone can, can access it. Uh, a lot of funding these days, if you have a nonprofit, is focused on place. And so there may be grant funding available for you to, or for other individuals that are interested uh, to make this happen for their community, for their neighborhood, for their town, for their state, or even for an idea. So if you had, oh, I'm trying to think of what you would do, it could be anything, uh, people who lived, in a particular area, you could pin them. I, I actually was starting to upload images taken at various uh, photo studios that I have in my collection, but that seemed to diffuse it too much and we stuck with the historical properties. Um, and Julie wants to know, this could work for a rural area with pictures of family farms. Yes. As long as it can be pinned to a geographic area, then then that's, it's possible, absolutely possible. Deborah Holman says, what's the best way for us to share this info with our local societies? Deborah, you, when this appears on my Facebook uh, page, then you can share this with anyone that you like. Um, it's publicly available on my Facebook page. You can share the website, anyone can use it. You can share Chrono Charts, uh, the website for information. You can share my podcast. So this becomes a podcast in about a week and then it'll get shared through my newsletter list. Just spread the word. This was a really fun project and I can see the potential for it down the, down the road for all the different ways that it can be used. Uh, Julie says that she lives near Navo, and actually I went there this year, Julie. It was quite fascinating could be homes of famous LDS church leaders, right? Could be all over the country. 
so that you could chart, let's say, um, congregational churches, where they were all over the country. As long as you have a map and you can pin it to it, then you can pin these historical things on the map. Um, I think it has a lot of potential. I think there's lots of things that all of you very creative people out there can think to do with it, uh, to do with something like this. And I'd love to hear about your ideas. So send me an email at photodetective at maureentaylor.com. Do take a look at oldpvd.com. And while this is my love affair with my mother city that I live in, it, it is adaptable to anywhere else. It's just that we started here because I live here and I have a Providence photo collection. I know everybody that's all over the place can put them in. And Julie, you are right. It could be Civil War or Revolutionary War battle sites. Now, what a great idea. And then we could take some of the people from my last muster project and pop them up. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> There's any number of things that you can do with this. So send, send us an email, go on Chrono Charts, go on Old PVD. There are little videos that help you figure out how to pin things to the map. Let's go, we can make it smaller. I just love going, so when you look at it, let's go back in time, because it is like time travel. And I love all that time travel stuff. So let's go to here. We've got one little building. And this was built in 1855. So this is the 1835 map, and then we have the 1875 map, and then the 1904 map. So this is on this map here, because it was there. It wasn't on the 1835 map, but it was between 1835 and 1875. Once we get more maps added, it will be uh, even clearer what you can do with this. But it takes uh, a little bit of time to, let's go back to that 1875, 1870 map, which I just love. It's the, the most time consuming part of the maps is actually laying one over the other so that all the streets match up, which is why the high resolution scans are so important. This is Dexter Asylum, which is no longer there. The Library of Congress. And then you can click on that and actually see that it, we don't have just a Library of Congress image. We have an image uh, of the front gates from the Providence Public Library. So there's a lot of information there. Let's see if anybody else has any questions. If you add a family or person's name to a property, is that searchable? Yes, if we put it in the caption or in the description, we should be able to find it. Yes, Fiona. The idea is to make all this information as accessible as possible. By the way, this Dexter Asylum, long gone. It's now a Brown University athletic complex. Do you provide the old maps or where would we find them of small areas? Yeah, it's a great idea if you have access to old maps. If you don't have a collection of old maps, uh, you can sometimes pick them up for not too much money on eBay. Uh, I didn't pay very much for the 1904 map. Uh, the 1875 70 map was a little more expensive. And then, you know, certainly interface with your local historical societies because they need as much uh, promoting as possible. Local collectors start working on a community-based project where you get people to bring their images. Uh, a while ago, I worked on one of those Images of America books for the Arcadia Publishing Company. It was where we lived before this, when we lived. Uh, this is, this is where I'm from, but when we lived uh, somewhere else, they asked me if I would put together a book for the community in which I lived, and I did. And the way we did it uh, was we had community events where people brought their images and we scanned them. And then you get them to sign a permission form. I have a contract for people when they say they want to contribute uh, that they need to sign. Uh, just to make sure everything is outlined and they know what the site is and they know who I am and what they can expect and what we can't deliver uh, as, as far as that goes. 
So we, I have a contract with all the contributors for all of that. But you can find maps just about everywhere. But the best place to find all of this material is through a series of community meetings where people bring things. Oh, my. Anybody else have any more questions? I could go on and on and on about this. I love my project. Um, I didn't really need another project. I'm pretty busy as the photo detective and the last muster project I work on. But I just felt that this needed to be done. Click on another one. Oops, and see how close you can get with this. It blows it up. This is the Providence Preservation Society uh, property again. As I mentioned, that's what we're focused on right now, getting all of these up because they can be uh, new information can be added in the comment field. And so we have the PDFs, which are the the nomination papers for the for the building, all of that, all that research has already been done, so we don't actually recopy that. And then a picture, a modern picture of the house. Let's go back to this. Thank you, Julie. I think it's a great idea, but I'm partial. And <laughs> I am pretty passionate about Providence. I do a lot of things to sort of keep track of the city of the city that I, of this place there I live and I love. Um, I think the importance of place can't be understated, both when we do our research, but also it gives us a sense of where we've been, where we are and where we're going. And Old PVD does that for my community. I'm hoping you can do it for yours. And so send us a message. Send me an email, and I hope you like this presentation today. I, oops, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. So thank you very much, and have a good rest of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching and listening. You can submit your questions for future episodes using the Ask Maureen button on MaureenTaylor.com or through any of my social media contacts. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as The Photo Detective and on Facebook at Maureen Photo Detective. I hope you'll come back for the next show. Don't forget to send me your questions. <laughs>